Second segment, we will talk to Chris Conway as well. Chris Conway out here off a very solid game over the weekend. But Cam, I know your holiday season was good because you got a couple of wins. Yeah, obviously that's we needed those badly. And, you know, we had a chance at Michigan State to get that one, and we didn't get it. Uh, they went home. And, you know, I think they they all felt pretty bad about the fact that you know, we just couldn't put the ball in the basket that defensively. We did what we had to do to win the game. And go to Breslin Center and hold them to you know below a point per possession, 67 points. Boy, we really had an opportunity late in the first half. You know, I looked at this score we were at one point. We should have. And we should have been on 13, 14 at the time. We just missed them. I mean, they did an unbelievable job. Oh, our guys did an unbelievable job of executing on offense and getting looks. And the ball just wouldn't go in. I mean, we, we had one possession. We, we had a, a 12-0 run. And at the end of that 12-0 run, we still got three stops. And we had three point point-blank shots. And we missed all three of them. That was wide open. That would have gotten it, you know, from five, I think it was, kind of maybe about 12. Then the key play, and I'm not blaming anybody, I'm just bringing it up. But, you know, we, we, just, we got a technical, which all the years we played in Breslin Center, is over. To get him, him get the first technical is the first time that's ever happened. All right, usually you're going to give me one just so they can give him one. You know, they, There's so many that hit to give you a technical. Usually that's how that works. And, uh, and, and then we missed the two free throws, which, you know, a very good free throw shooter just, it just wasn't meant to be that night. And I think our kids, <coughs> excuse me, I think our kids went home for the holidays. Uh, they, they had to live with the fact that they really had a chance to win that game. And it, could, it, it just, it was on us not winning. And I think they really came on and put an unbelievable effort together for the Milwaukee game. We needed it. We had talked to them about this being the most important game to play this year because 0-3, you're not coming back to win a championship at 0-3. No one in the history of the league has ever won at 0-2, and so we're trying to do that. Uh, but they great, great performance against Milwaukee. And we found out two days later, Milwaukee's a pretty good team. They won the Detroit. And my, personally, I thought Detroit, through the preseason, Northern Kentucky and Detroit were the two best teams in the league. That's what I thought, having watched all the teams. Now, we haven't prepped for them. Uh, we haven't played them yet, so until you do that, you'll know for sure. But just and for Milwaukee to go there and win, coming off what we did to Milwaukee, uh, that says a lot about them as a team. And then we came back <coughs> against Green Bay, and while they, they're having a really tough season, uh, uh, you know, I thought that we, we played – we did what we had to do. It was business. I thought it was business. We, did, we didn't play a great basketball game, um, but we we played extremely hard defensively, and uh, and then we had some walls. But I was very pleased with the game. Uh, I did by just so you know, I did send Coach Ryan and his staff pizza at their and staff meeting at noon today. You can't believe how hard it is to order pizza in Green Bay, Wisconsin, and get it to their the practice facility. I mean, I, I bet you I spent 30 minutes on the phone, and then I got a phone call back saying, you still owe a dollar forty. You got my credit card, just put it on. And well, we have to have your permission. And I go, did you tip the driver? The guy goes, you want to tip the driver? And I go, sure. You know what two people, anybody guess what two pizzas and cheese bread? Two large pepperoni pizzas and cheese bread in Milwaukee, Wisconsin costs. Or not Milwaukee, Green Bay, Green Bay, Wisconsin. What do you think that costs? $41.50. But they only charged me $40. And then a the dollar fifty they I still don't understand that phone call. But I gave them a, I think it was a five or ten dollar tip. So it, uh, I feel a lot better about that and where that game ended. <laughs> <laughs> That's just not us. We, you are not us. Yeah, and you're referring to the uh, the alley dunk there at the uh, at the at the end of the game. Uh, I was in a really bad situation. I know. I mean, the fans. Either, either Will Ryan hate you or the crowd hate you. Right. One of the two. Right. right. You're going to get hated. So normally in that situation, I you know, put my hands up and tell them to stop. You know, the band is going crazy about one more point. You know, we've subbed everybody, right? I mean, it's not like I'm. Uh, uh, and Jalen gets the ball, and I'm thinking to myself, 
I put my hands up, they're going to be mad. I hope he goes down and misses. You know, that, that way is not my fault, right? He didn't score, so Will's not going to be upset. Uh, and it turns out to be a dunk, and then we get a technical on top of the dunk. And it just, it was, I, I do think that they, they called it technical because we don't. Yeah. I mean, I think the referee was upset. He referee didn't know, but maybe I should send him pizza too because he didn't. Know. Well, then you can afford to. Right? Yeah. <laughs> he got a family like that. Yeah. Not, that's a serious commitment. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is the Craig Campy Show. We're live at RJ's Pub in Rochester Hills again. As we were talking about, uh, tweet your questions with the hashtag Ask Cam. We got a couple of those coming in, so we'll get to those coming up in the third well, segment hey, of the show. Just so they understand, the reason I sent that pizza. Was I went over to Will while the game was still while they were administering the technicals? And I said, Will, I'm sorry, it's my fault. I go, but all these fans just got free pizza. And he looked at me and goes, Do I get free pizza? <laughs> <laughs> so I had to send the pizza. Right? And you, that was a long parlay that you lost there. Can't I'll let him shoot. Hopefully, he misses. Bucks. He makes it. Yeah. So 50 bucks later. I hope everybody's cool. <laughs> you still got to take care of the official, too. So there you go. No, man. <laughs> no, you're never going to do That's that. That's not going to happen. Uh, no, but, but Kim, what about that, though? I mean, th those two games, both of them, I thought, where that first that first eight to 10 minutes of that Milwaukee game, I asked you this on the, on the television broadcast. I said, if you scripted it out, how it could go ultimately for you, which which things never do. But if you could perfectly script that for you, that was it. How that how that basketball game went, and you know you that, that game against Milwaukee on Thursday, just that first first ten minutes of the game was about picture perfect, wasn't it? Yeah, but if you go back to the Eastern game the last time we were home, offensively the first ten minutes was maybe the best ten minutes of basketball we played all year. Yeah. The difference was defensively, Eastern was scoring. And against Milwaukee, now we've got both sides of the ball playing at that level. And that's what the difference really was in the game. And every time they came back at us, we had an answer for them, which is the first time this year with this team that that's happened. Both the Milwaukee <laughs> and the Green Bay games. The first five minutes of the second half, we played flawless basketball. And that was the difference in both those games and the difference in our team. Think about the Michigan State game. Think about the Boise State game. Think about the Syracuse game. The last three minutes of the first half, we're at the other four-minute timeout in Syracuse. We, I think we had a one-point lead. We're sitting in the timeout, and we go down 19, I think, about that, right? Boise, uh, we were ahead at the other three-minute timeout was in the first half, and I think we went down seven. And then the first three minutes of the second half, I think they went on a 10 0 run or something like that to make it you know, 15 or 16. Michigan State, if you can believe this, because I've been all my years, I've never seen a stat like this. Michigan State made two threes in the last minute and a half of the first half. Uh, that's when we missed the two free throws, the technical. They made two threes to go from down one to up five, 29 24. Then they came out and they scored 23 points in four minutes. They made nine straight shots. I think five of them threes. So, yeah, that's 23 points. That makes sense. The, the math even adds up. So, in four minutes and the last minute and a half of the first half, in six minutes, they scored 29 points. The rest of the game, the last other 34 minutes of the game, they scored 38 points. And I've never seen anything like that before. And it was defensively, we got you know shell shocked a little bit because they made those shots, but you know, and, and they made nine shots in a row. Which no matter how good you play defensively, a good offense will always will always top defense because if ball goes in, it doesn't matter. So you take that out. And we've talked about that. We really stressed to them the first three to five minutes of the second half in, in the Milwaukee game. You know, we did a great job. You know, we did it again in the Green Bay game. Now, that doesn't mean every time we stress it, it's going to happen. But the fact that they realized what we lost the Boise State game, we lost the Michigan State game because of that. And they fixed it at our level. And if we can continue to play defense the way we're playing it, especially coming out of timeouts and coming out of the break. Um, that's going to bode well for us to give us a real chance. 
Uh, Coach gave me some news today, too, for the Golden Grizzlies basketball program. The Horizon League announced that uh, Jalen Moore was named the Nike Horizon League basketball player of the week. Uh, certainly everybody knows uh, knows the numbers as well. That he's a high eight assist against Milwaukee on Thursday and then had 25 points against Green Bay on Saturday. Jalen Moore continues to, to climb the rankings as we can he would when he came back on the floor uh, for Oakland, certainly a lot more healthy as well. He's 10th in the nation right now in assists per game. He's approaching the top 30 in the country in, in total assists. And you knew Cam, you saw it from minute one when he came back against Milwaukee the other night. He has that explosion again. He's back. Well, the, the, the telling stat was he shot, what, 25 free throws in two games. Right. You know, two years ago, he led the nation in free throws attempted in a game. And then last year, it, it wasn't as many. Um, but that's what he is. He's so explosive. He's so fast. And in the first, you know, 10 games, that he, should, he should never play. And he knows that. I know that. And if, if we could spend that time, we would. And we would do it right. But he's as stubborn as I am. And, and he, it was his last year. And he didn't want to sit. He didn't want to miss, you know, Eastern against the Monty Bates. He didn't want to, you know. And the reality of it is with I should have listened to the doctor. The doctor told me to play. I said, we need three weeks. And if we had done that November, you know, to December, uh, it maybe we, we might not be doing too many uh, But we did it. And let's say we were just smart enough to shut it down after Syracuse. In the Syracuse game, he got a steal. <laughs> he was at midcourt, and he didn't even try and beat everybody out of the you know, And that, when I saw that, I just, it, it, it dawned on me, man, this kid's hurt. And so that's why we eventually did show it down. Uh, it's great to see him back. It's great to see him get the free throw line. The biggest factor, though, for Jalen in these two games was he had two turnovers. Right. Two turnovers. And uh, that's an off the chart assist to turn over ratio. Eight off the chart. 15 to 2 or whatever. Yeah. Was, yeah. But more importantly, he sat, and, and this is, well, he sat on the bench and watched us play these games. And we did an unbelievable, one of my biggest fears against staying and against boys who he wasn't playing was turning the ball 20 turnovers. Or whatever. Right. And in both those games, we had less than 10 turnovers, and I looked at him. And I said, hey, you know, he goes, I get it, I get it. I go, let's get rid of the touchdown passes, right? Let's get rid of threading the needle and let's just play solid basketball because we just had a chance to beat Michigan State without him uh, because we didn't turn the ball. We, you know, we, Michigan State got nine offensive rebounds and we had eight turnovers, and that was why we won the game. And so he, sitting on the bench, saw that and came out after saying, I got you, coach. He came out with one turnover each game, and that was huge. For us. It was if we can now he's not going to get one every game because he handles the ball too much. But if he can keep it to a, you know, a seven to one ratio or, or whatever, then we got a chance to be great. Not good. Uh, Cam, is the turnover one of the more underrated stats in basketball? Because anytime you ever see a game that go doesn't go the way it was supposed to go, like an underdog wins or uh, a better team doesn't play well. You can almost all the time go to that turnover count. Yeah, whoever, whoever didn't play well, turn the basketball over because you're giving away possessions. And that's it. There's two major things in turnovers do. It limits your shots. And it's still a team that scores the most points to win. So you got to shoot the ball and you just got to go in. But you got to get up attempts. And turnovers take those away from you. And then this, the second thing it does is it gives the other team odd man rushes for them. A lot of times you turn over. And that's why a three-point shot from the corner that doesn't go in is, is just as effective as a turnover because where does the three-point shot from the corner miss normally go? To the free throw line. Yeah. It hits the rim and flies towards their basket. Somebody's catching it on the run and going, and it, it creates an odd man rush. And um, the statistics, which is why you don't put people on the free throw line, the statistics say that the more people – that are on defense, the harder it is to score. Pretty simple statistic, right? So if you have five guys back there, they don't score at the rate they do if they're playing against four, three on three, three on four, you know, or odd man type thing. So turnovers are huge. Uh, four shots are light turnovers. So 
know, if you turn the ball, and a lot of times we teach and tell kids, you know, don't catch that ball and throw it back in play, just take the turnover, take a dead ball turnover. While it limits your shot selection, it doesn't allow them to get out of hand rushes. So, yeah, I, I think turnovers feel low percentage, and then rebounding rates are, you know, those are the determining factors of wins usually. Well, the Greg Campy Show is brought to you in part by Farmer Owned and Prairie Farms. Dedicated farmers, happy cows, real milk, drink local with Prairie Farms. We'll take our first break in the Greg Campy Show. When we come back, I'll be joined by Chris Conway. He had a big time game for the Golden Grizzlies against Green Bay. Do that, and you looked over and you're 
like, yeah, because you're a Bears fan. We're united in our dislike for Aaron Rodgers. Yes, definitely. I feel like any team that's playing against the Packers, I'm rooting for it. So, this week I'm a Lions fan. <laughs> it's, it's real, everybody. It is real. Um, you know, this basketball too, this basketball team, uh, basketball and Chris, it, it looked bottom line. No, those were two big, big wins. And they were big for a long two reasons. Certainly, you played well. That was great to see. Jamal told me that. I mean, it, it, it is. You see the difference, right, in practice between Jamal today and the Jamal that was kind of, you know, the Syracuse game and the Michigan State game. You're not able to play the Michigan State game. Coach can't be talking about it. You really saw the Syracuse game. He had lanes to attack, but he just wasn't there. How much does that change things for Syracuse? It's huge. He's the heart of our team. He's been here for three years. And um, whenever he has the ball in his hands, he makes things happen. So. When he's healthy, it would be a really good team. And obviously, when he wasn't healthy, we were struggling, but I definitely thought some guys stepped up. Uh, Brody came off pressure. I think he did a good job as a young player. Um, but when Jamal's healthy, we're a whole different team. So. No, absolutely. Um, Chris, I, I always wanted to ask you this too. Like, you were rolled up old player as a big. Yeah. And Coach Campy's talked about the Keith Benson story. And you know, obviously, he's number retired. He played in the NBA and all that kind of stuff. Where he talks about the progression of Keith Benson as a freshman to the Keith Benson that played in the NBA to had a long ball basketball career. Is, is that something that, that you took into account or anything like that when you made your decision to come to Oakland, like the history and development of Biggs? Definitely. I feel like if you look at the things that have come through here, a lot of the time they come in like me. Um, you know, initially they're just figuring things out, trying to uh, progressively get better. And with players like him and other centers in the past, even recently, like Brent Brenton, um, who just made a big jump from their like second or third years and ended up being really solid players. Definitely Do you feel like that's happening to, to you right now? Like you're, you're on that path to, to, to making that big jump? That's the goal. I just feel like the biggest thing is just we practice six days a week. You know, there's games once or twice a week. So the biggest thing is just practice, staying consistent, doing the things that I know that I'll be better. Talking to Chris Conway here on the Greg Campy Show live at RJ's Club in Rochester Hills. Take us through the holidays. Uh, you know, what, 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 as a guy that you know, was from the greater Chicago area, what, what was that like for you in that timeline? So take us through the end of the Michigan State game to the game against Green Bay. What's that look like for you guys? Uh, so we got back uh, that night and the next morning at 7 a.m. I got up and then I drove over because there was a big storm that was coming in. So once I got home, uh, I just spent like three days with my family. Didn't really go out much. Saw a couple of friends, but kind of stayed uh, here at home. And then when it was time to come back, the roads were really bad. So I was going like 40 miles per hour on the highway. Oh, yeah, probably for like two hours. So I probably took an extra hour and a half to get back. Then I practiced the next morning. We did like a scrimmage. We had another practice later. How big is that to that time, man? Because I don't think people fully grasp. Like we know, but we don't know that the time demands being a Division One college basketball player, like this isn't this isn't fun and games, man. Like this isn't you know this isn't laugh time and joke time and stuff like that. It's a serious business. Yeah, the biggest thing for me is just seeing my mom. Uh, she's the one that probably struggles with the most, not me. She wants to see me a lot. And, um, we talk a lot, but that time it's a lot to her. So anytime I can see her, she goes somewhere. I'm talking to Chris Powell right here. Chris, what, what do you do? You know, when you get that precious downtime. What's that look like? You would try to hang out, guys kick it, what do you guys do? Yeah, a lot of video games, a lot of naps too. Just try to rest and uh, relax. We don't really do a lot. We train everybody somewhere. Introverted yes. people, so. I was going to ask you about that. Like, who's the loud one between you guys? Because I can't picture that there is one. It depends on the day, but if we're together, we're both loud. So, you know, yeah. you yeah. can you ask teammates, like, so in certain situations, like, we'll talk and be loud, but most of the time, we'll be quiet. <laughs> who's doing the most trash talking during a video game? Me, 100%. You could ask him. He gets a point, but it's definitely me. What I'm wanting, if I'm losing, I'll say it. I'll be quiet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't want to do that. Chris, what's it going to take for this basketball team? Because through all this start, right, through, through the 2-11 and 11 start, and you know, people were maybe looking for some answers and, and stuff like that, yet you guys have these two home games. You guys play well. You're back to 2-2. Two two. You're on level footing right now as far as the horizon we play is concerned. Your goals are all on there in front of you still. I mean, if this is, it's short, like it'll be short once it's over when we get to March and look back on it and say, man, what's happened? But with all that being said, there is a lot of basketball left. You guys have a huge, huge task coming up this week as well. But you know, what's it going to take, Chris, for this team? 
this is all set and done, and you guys are where you want to be, what happens? Um, I feel like the biggest thing is just we need to consistently play our defense and play hard. Um, Coach talks a lot about how that defense can be really good and play hard. So I think the biggest thing is just doing that, focusing on the things that we struggle with as a team in practice, as rebounding, guarding the ball, stuff like that, and just making an effort to do it every game for 40 minutes. And offensively, I think we have a really talented team. So just continue to trust each other and uh, play inside out. Talking to Chris Conway here on the Greg Campy Show, live at RJ's Pub in Rochester Hill. So we talked about you being a Bears fan. There are a couple other critical components you have to ask. Cubs or White Sox? White Sox, for sure. Really? Yeah. Okay. I don't even know why. I just like the colors better when I was younger. So. It's just that simple, yeah. everybody. Sometimes, sometimes it is. Uh, my son has that way football. That's why he likes to see more. So it's like that. The sea green, the blue, and all that kind of stuff. Whatever, man. So it's the way that it is. So Bulls fan, obviously. Yeah, for sure. Hockey guy at all? Uh, when they were good, like with the Blackhawks, like early 2000s, yeah. they were good. I would kind of pay attention, but not really. Okay. So more of a bit self, self-professed self family. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. If you're honest about it, then it's okay. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to have too much hot. <laughs> so, Chris, I mean, you know, just as far as this basketball team, again, going back to it, huge test this week at Northern Kentucky, at Wright State. I mean, traditionally, pound for pound, that's the toughest road trip that there is, just given the teams you're playing with, venues you're playing on that. What's it going to take? Because, again, Northern Kentucky looks like they're the real deal. They're still at 4 no. I know it's still early, as we talked about. We're going to learn some things about you. But you know what, though, Chris? We're going to learn some things about Northern Kentucky this week, too, aren't you? And that's the goal, right? Yeah, definitely. It's going to take 40 minutes, uh, especially Northern Kentucky to beat them. Um, I just feel like if we do the things that we did positively in the last two games, we'll be okay. It's just a little harder on the road, but uh, we were talking earlier in defense. Um, wherever you're at, you know, you can play defense if you're willing to do it. Making shots, it's kind of like up in the air, but um, defensively. It's, it's a one-two business, exactly, right? Exactly. So um, the biggest thing is just playing the defense but giving effort and rebounding. I think those are going for you. What clicked for this zone? You know, when, when you look at, and I talked to Coach Campy about this, and I talked to Coach Smith about this on pregame shows, something changed in that Boise State game. It, I mean, it just did, and you can see it. And then you're like, well, let's see what happens at Michigan State. And then it was more the same, like Coach Campy talked about. You had a 34 minute stretch, I think it was, where you guys had 38 points to Michigan State. What, what, what changed with this zone defense? I think uh, a pretty big part of it was that we have some new guys who are playing the zone, and it's not a super easy zone to figure out, especially if you're at the top or you're at the way. So um, that's part of it, but I think an even bigger part is just um, making the conscious effort to uh, give effort, fly around, run around, and uh, just make sure you're giving all you've got for 40 minutes. I feel like once we figured out how to do our spots and where everyone should be, that second part of it was a little bit easier for them. Uh, you're on the Greg Campy show. At some point, we have to talk about food. You're a big hamburger fan. Yeah. Definitely. Give me the perfect Chris Conway hamburger. Really plain. I'll only get, if it's just like any restaurant, I'll probably get uh, cheese, ketchup, and just a burger. That's all I'm getting. Right. Right. So yeah. you're, you're like a traditionalist. Yes. You are about that hamburger. Exactly. Yeah. You're not into the exotics, right? right? Like you, don't, you don't need bacon and barbecue sauce or coleslaw or something. Like uh, and then when it comes to lettuce and stuff, my mom gets mad at me because I don't eat no vegetables, but uh, I'm not a huge fan of it, so I can play with it. <laughs> there he is. He's a burger traditionalist, yeah. everybody. Uh, but he is. He, he's coming on strong right now. Certainly something that we will keep our eye on. Chris, appreciate you. Thank okay. you. Appreciate it. It's always a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Chris Conley, everybody here. Uh, James Paul, Rochester Hills.
Welcome back to RJ's Pub here in Rochester Hills, the Greg Campy Show. My name is Neil Roll, of course. He is a coach, Greg Campy. Happy to have you all with us. Oakland Basketball brought to you by the Pino Insurance Agency. Pino you know, Insurance Agency, LLC, of Mimic Insurance caters to the educational market. If you're looking for an affordable insurance and a knowledgeable insurance agency, go online to pinoinsurance.com. Again, P I N O insurance. Dot com today we pick you Greg Hessen back at our 1270 the Bet Studios your radio home for Golden Grizzlies basketball and uh, a lot of fun to chop it up with Chris Cowan. Yeah, I think that our fans, you know, should really pay attention to Chris because you may not ever see that again. You know, but in this day and age of the transfer portal, um, you know, one of the biggest things that we're going to lose is the development of players. And Chris has stuck with us when maybe he shouldn't have. Maybe, maybe other people have told him, you know, you didn't get to play right away. And, you know, you know I just I wonder if anybody will stay and go through. I've been hard on him, very hard on him. And, you know, it's starting to pay dividends. And it's still on him. I mean, there's a long way to go for him. But he's got a history of players at Oakland before him, from Xavier to uh, Keith, you know, who remembers Keith Benson's freshman year? You know, who remembers his retro year? You know, I mean, it wasn't a spectacular, you know, I think there are a lot of people that at the end of Keith's sophomore year was going, where did this kid come from? And, uh, you know, the development of bigs at our level is, you know, I mean, we've, we've had a lot of great bigs that have developed, but, you know, it's going to be hard to keep those kids in the future. And, so it's good to see that, you know, it's starting to pay dividends for him. He's got a long way to go. He's got to put stack games together like that. Um, he's got to continue to become aggressive offensively. You know, he knows and everybody in our, in our program and team knows that he, he can, he's where he needs to be offensively from a skill point. He's got to get more confident. He's got to get more aggressive. You know, he's got to take the ball through people, which he's started to do. He's got to believe it's going to go in. He was seven for eight the other night. The only shot he missed, he got his own rebound and laid it in. So hopefully those things will help him develop and and grow. He's, you know, he's got two more years after this year. And, um, you know, it, it, all those dreams that we had, and he had coming here and we thought he could become, uh, are still out there for him to get. And if you remember Brad Brechting, I mean, Brad, Brad was in his third year and he all of a sudden out of nowhere, uh, we had an injury. He started playing more, and he had a 31.18 rebound game against Youngstown. And from that point on, you know, he, he, he was a uh, staple in the starting lineup. And more, more importantly, he believed he was good. I don't know if Brad ever believed he was good until until those things happened. And so with Chris, the same way, you know, I'm just hoping that it continues. And I really believe he could have a 31.18 rebound game in his career. I hope I get to see it. Can't be ready to rock with the uh, Twitter questions. Sure. All right. Hashtag ask can't be. If you want to sneak one in at the last second, uh, we'll start at the top. Our guy Austin Davis here in the house today. Can you provide any update on Lauren Bowman's injury? Yeah. I, I mean, <clears throat> Lauren has gone through uh, a plethora of injuries. Plethora? Yeah. Whatever that word is. Okay. And he, part of it is, you know, getting back in shape from having COVID and sitting out two years and, you know, and, and he's got to lose weight. He knows that. We know that. Uh, but 
when you've been sitting there, sitting there, sitting there. Yeah. We'll give it to you. I'm close, I'm close, close, close enough. Like when, you, when you haven't done much. Uh, when you've been inactive. Yeah. You know, your body is no different than any of us. And so we're, we're trying to slowly bring him along as we've said all year. And he keeps having little injuries. And, you know, we got the ankle injury. He got sick. And now he's got a back, a lower back injury. And as I, I think I said this somewhere in the press conference or something. The first day back from uh, Christmas, our tradition is the first practice we play an inter squad scrimmage because we've been off three or four days. And then we'll we'll have a short practice where we do an inner squad scrimmage, 20, 30 minutes play. Uh, so they get the feel of going up and down the court. Then we'll come back four or five hours later and have a real practice. And in that inner squad scrimmage, he was killing it. I mean, he was making every shot. He was talking to smack to people. He was, and then with about three minutes to go in it, he walked off the floor. Uh, our, our trainer came to me and said he he hurt his lower back. And, uh, he hasn't done anything since. Uh, today he warmed up with us. Uh, the, the stretching exercises that we do, he did it with the team, and that's the first activity he's had since the 26th of December. Um, I don't know enough about uh, if he'll ever be back or not this year. I don't know. I'm hoping he is, but uh, we don't know. Back, it's a back injury. Uh, Horizon Matt asked, uh, how's the blister for Blake Landman? Did blood come out of his shoe? Uh, he's got a two-part question. So we'll, we'll handle the Blake Landman thing first. Well, with Blake, <coughs> I found out before the game that he, he's got a blister. And I've, I've done this for a million years, and it's the first time I've ever seen blisters. Uh, Rocket had one earlier. It got infected. It, it got under the callus. And now Blake's the same way. And, and he said, oh, I'm playing. I'm just going to pad it up. And with about three minutes to go in the game, at the under four timeout, uh, they're in that hut, you know, they sit in the chairs. And I come in, I sat down, and I had my head down. I looked down, and he had a canvas shoe on. You know, he didn't have a leather shoe. It was like a cloth on the top of it. And there's a big blood stain on the shoe. And I'm like, oh, I guess that blister's not doing too good. And he goes, no, that's something else. And I'm like, oh. And, uh, <laughs> Perfect. So today, I stay out of that stuff, and the reason I stay out of it is because they know I want them to play. And if I put my nose in there, it appears like, you know, I'm calling that sissy word, you know, or something like yeah. that. And, and that's not what I want them to think. So I try and stay out of injuries. Now, if it's lagging on and, and you know, I might go up to them and say, you know, uh, Travis Bader had a sprained ankle and he played in four days. You know, I might, I might say something like that, but for the most part, I completely stay out of it and I just wait for our trainer to tell me. And he told me that Blake, there, he was seeing a doctor after practice today. I haven't heard anything back, so I don't think it's anything serious um, that they were going to lance the blister for underneath the callus and he'd probably be out tomorrow and then he would practice on Wednesday. Uh, Jalen did not practice today. He came down on his wrist again. Uh, I don't know if you saw during the game, he was shaking his wrist, but he got hit in the first half hard and came down on it. And he really struggled last night uh, in, in, with pain. And so, that, you know, they're, they're giving him a couple days. They think he's okay, but if not, we'll do an MRI on, on Wednesday. The good is it's the right wrist, not the left wrist. Um, I mean, there's nothing good about it, but it, it it's a lot better than it being the left wrist. And uh, was there anything else? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, Rizzo Matt also wanted to know if Northern Kentucky had a moment at the end of the game like you guys did with Green Bay, a la the dunk that we talked about earlier, we had to set pizza over there. How much skyline chili would you need to call it even? No. Yeah, uh, that, <laughs> that's a good question. <laughs> I'm not the ch I eat the chili mac. So it did, I need the noodles too. So right. They would, uh, How much? I think a couple of bowls. A couple of bowls. But we had we had an incident there a few years ago, uh, and John Brennan, the coach, and I had, had a, you know at, at first it didn't go real well, but afterwards we figured it out. But their fans were really on tender ground, and uh, I mean unmercifully. That, that was that was one of the worst right. ones I've ever yeah, seen. Yeah, some of the things they said to me about Kendra, I actually went to stands and I told them. I said something to the guy, go just, you know what, instead of doing all this, why don't you wait for me right here after the game, I'll come talk to you and I'll explain the situation. 
and the, not give the kid credit. He waited there, and I told him everything. He goes, okay, coach, my bad. I'll never do that. But Kendrick heard all that, and, and Kendrick put about 100 on them at their place. And, uh, late in the game, he dribbled down and dumped it. And, yeah, like, and, and like a and hammer. He, he, it wasn't like Jose's. I mean, it was like this was the, to win the national dunk contest or something. It was just letting his frustration out because there's student sections right in front of our bench or that basket, and he put it down. Um, and their coach at that time didn't like that. And, uh, we had a conversation about it privately, and it got fixed. But uh, So I don't think that will ever happen in Northern Kentucky again. He, he dunked it so hard that, like, people got quiet. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, the he, basket. He, yeah, I thought the basket might yeah. come down. Yeah, it, it, was, it was pretty incredible. Yeah. Uh, our guy, Pittsburgh Marty, wants to know, hashtag Ask Campy, uh, happy, happy New Year, two great Ws. It's a great way to finish 2022 with non-conference play compete. How do you go about scheduling non-conference games for next season? Do you have any already scheduled? Yeah, we're, we're pretty well into it. Um you know, we're in the last year of our contract with Bowling Green. So I think we'll open with Bowling Green at home next year. Uh, that's the tentative date. Those dates can always change because, you know, maybe there's a buy game out there that, that we can get a lot of money on. And they say, well, the only game we can play is the only time we can play is opening day. So then I call Bowling Green and say, look, I got to move this. So, you know, at this time, there's no set in stone dates. Uh, we've got Michigan State at uh, Little Caesars next year. That'll that's the last year of that contract. Although we are discussing. Uh, are you confident with the? You said you're discussing. Like, are you a, confident? A, a, a discussions. Con, a, con, uh, a continuation of it or yes. a, an extension? Yeah, I mean, I think so. I, I you know, I, I think Tom's always going to play us. It's just a matter of, you know, what's going on in the Big Ten. How many teams are going to have? How many non leagues? We talked about that a couple of weeks ago on the show. And uh, that's why I normally I wouldn't breach the extension until after the game next year when there's only one year left on the contract. But that's why I brought it up. And I talked to uh, uh, what's the scheduling girder there? Uh, yeah, Kevin uh, Proctor. Thank you. Thank you, Smith. I talked to Kevin uh, a couple days ago about it, and because. We're setting, I think the date next year at the Little Seniors is going to be December 21st. And so, uh, you know, we're trying to get, the, that's the date that Little Caesars wants. We've we've approved that date. I'm waiting on them to approve that date. And then we'll get that in stone. Uh, it'd be interesting if it is on whether I can get Izzo to do another elf costume or something. <laughs> uh, you know, so so we've got that game, and then we're uh, we've got Toledo at home, and we're at Eastern Michigan. Uh, Xavier, we've got Xavier. Uh, we were supposed to play them this year, but you know, there's a long story there with Sean coming back, and uh, someday I'll tell that story. I don't think I can tell it right now, um, but I think we're going to play Xavier, and then I have not signed the contract yet, but we have a verbal agreement with Illinois. And uh, I got a lot of friends here in Chicago, and they've always said, come on, when are you going to play them again? And so I got about 15 guys I got to get right behind the bench for that game. <laughs> They're all Illinois fans, too. But for one night, they'll wear black and gold. Uh, as an addition to any of that, you still out, you're always out looking, right? Like, oh, yeah. We've, we've got one or two more to schedule. Uh, at least one more uh, quad one game. You know, and I've got – I've in talks with Florida, uh, Purdue, Oregon, Utah, and uh, Ohio State, but it's not going on with them. I don't think that's going to happen, but I'm pushing. That's the game I'd like of all of them, Ohio State, because you can get on a bus and drive and come back. Right. It's, you know, we, we fly somewhere. Like, we flew to Syracuse in a charter that cost $25,000. So now of that 80 grand, 60, you're only down to 55. Right. So uh, the Ohio State one, uh, Purdue, I, I would – think we would drive to that. The players wouldn't like that, but we would probably drive to Purdue too. And, uh, so, you know, I'm hoping to get a game like that because obviously we do that for the finances and, and uh, that's, that's one of the games I hope to get. So it, it's close to being done. Um, and then in May, something will happen and it'll blow all up and I'll start over. So it's just, yeah, it's just par for the course. Yes. Uh, Marty also wants to know what's the itinerary for the upcoming Northern Kentucky Red State trip. 
last Friday night game, so we'll practice here on Thursday. We'll get on a bus probably 3.30, 4 o'clock in the afternoon and head down to, to – uh, we stay just in Covington, Kentucky. I'm sure all of you have driven through there and you go over the bridge and there's big Marriott. When you go over the bridge, if you look to your right, you can see it. That's where we normally stay. Um, and then that's about a 15 minute drive to the game. So we'll go down there. Uh, it's an evening game on Friday. So we'll have like a noon shoot around at in, in the arena. Uh, we'll come back. We'll eat at probably three if it's a seven o'clock game. We'll get there around 530. And, We'll find out how good we are. All right, yeah, absolutely. Uh, then, like as far as the rest of, we go. Are we going to Wright State that night? We staying? will go. We, we as long as so. This is how this works. It, it sounds like science, but it's all about money. Um, if the hotel that we're staying at gives us a late checkout, we always get on the bus after the game and go to where we're going. If they won't give us a late checkout, then we'll stay there because what are we going to do from noon to five o'clock on game day, right? Right. So most of those hotels, especially in this day and age, want us there because there are other options. And so we'll usually get a four o'clock, five o'clock checkout. We'll go to Northern Kentucky, we'll play the game, we'll get on the bus, and we'll drive to Dayton, which is an hour drive. And then we'll get in because the guys aren't going to go. I mean, you remember what you were in college, you know, you're not going to bed at, at no. 11 or 12 o'clock at night, right? So I don't want to go back to the hotel and what are they going to do? I want to get, be on the bus, get to uh, Dayton or in, in, if it's Youngstown, get to Robert Morris. If it's Cleveland State, get to Fort Wayne. If it's Green Bay, get to Milwaukee. You know, get there one or two o'clock, they'll probably then go to bed. Uh, get up at 9, 10 in the morning. We don't have anything going. They can sleep in and we'll have a practice, a very short practice uh, on Sam Friday, somewhere in early afternoon. All right, well, we'll take our final break and when we come back, we'll, we'll talk more about that trip, Northern Kentucky, uh, Wright State, as well as Coach Campy talked about, you know, uh, we'll find out. Uh, as Drake would say, we're going to see. I know, I know you're a big Drake guy, Cam. So, you know, I know that's, uh, you know, Chris, he's, he's a big Drake guy. Right? Yeah, absolutely. So, we'll take our final break and we come back. We'll wrap this thing up. You're listening to Greg Campy's show. We are live at RJ's Pub in Rochester Hills. Here in Michigan. So, it's busy. show here live at RJ's Pub in Rochester Hills. He's a coach, Greg Campy. My name is Neil Rule, the voice of the Golden Grizzlies. And 
excuse me, the Greg Campy Show is also brought to you by Henry Ford Sports Medicine, official team physicians for Oakland University and you. For more information, visit henryford.com backslash athletes. Golden Grizzlies, Northern Kentucky coming up Friday night. I believe that's 7 o'clock. I think that is the... Uh, that is the tip time. Yes, that is the case. We'll be on the air on the radio side at 1270 AM, the Vet your Radio Home and the Odyssey app for Golden Grizzlies basketball at 630 with the pregame show. So camp, uh, you know, you kind of teased that a little bit before we went to the break. You're going to find out how good you are, right? Yeah, this is a big weekend for the league as far as how the standings are going to fall out. Um, you know, if you're Northern Kentucky, you're 4-0. You've got Oakland and Detroit at home. Um, you'll have played six games and you'll have played five of the six at home, which means they got a lot of road games staring them in the face and they can't stumble if, if they're going to win this thing. I'm sure that's what they're thinking. Who knows the truth on that? But the, if you look at it, you think you've got to defend home court and you've got Wright State who's got us. And they've got three losses. You know, there's been years in the last five years that they've only had three for the season or four at the most. Right. And they're one and three, and four of their six will have been home after this weekend. Um, so, you know. It's huge for them. Yeah, big huge. weekend for those two teams. You know, we think it's huge for us because, you know, we, we stumbled in December and we can't, you know. I mean, if, if we're two and four at the end of the week, it's not like we can sit here and say we're, and we're four games out of first place. It's not like we can sit here and say we're going to win it. Um, we can still have a chance to, but now you're battling for the top four. You know, and I think Detroit feels the same way. So it's a big weekend for the teams. You look over Youngstown plays uh, uh, Robert Morris. And both those teams are two and two. So that's a big game. Then you've got Milwaukee going to Cleveland State and to, in Fort Wayne. Those are big games. You know, Milwaukee's three and one, Cleveland State's three and one, Fort Wayne, who's the preseason favorites, two and two already. And Milwaukee's going in there. So it's a big weekend for Horizon League basketball uh, and to kind of shake things out and give everybody. On Sunday, everybody's going to kind of look at it. You're not quite a third of the way through the schedule, and you're saying, okay, now. I've got all these games at home or I've got all these games on the road and what do we got to do? Because the truth of the matter is all 11 coaches care about one thing and that's finishing in the top four. And if you can finish in the top four, you get to buy and you get a home game. And if you can't make it to Indianapolis, that's on you. And so that's what the real thing is. The, the regular season championship has diminished so much over time in the in the fans eyes and in the media's eyes i mean all you hear about is that right state right state was last year's horizon league champion right well they finished fourth but they're right last year's horizon league champion right. they went to the and, and so that's what the world thinks and, and i think we as coaches fight that because we we really want the regular season championship you used to really really push back against that. Right, and I've learned not to because the fans don't care what I think. They care what they think. And our players want to go to the NCAA tournament. And, and, you know, I had a team win the league but not go to the tournament, and they were devastated over that. So I've learned over time, too, that it's, you know, we got to get in the top four. And no matter what happens this coming weekend, we can do it. But we also have a chance to go make a statement about a team. I mean, we're four and a lot, right? I guarantee you Northern Kentucky fans are worrying about Detroit. They're not even thinking about us. And probably the same with Wright State. So we're just quietly going to go in there and play our best and see what happens. Yeah, and I mean, for you guys too, like when we wrap this weekend up, we will already have had the games at Northern Kentucky, at Wright State, at Fort Wayne, at Cleveland State as well. So, you know, you, you kind of laid out, it's almost like a horse race, right? Like you're setting up the running order. We've yeah. broken out of the gate. Now let's let's analyze the situation and see how we got to run the race. We'll have played six games and four of them have been on the road and they're at the last year's champion, this year's preseason pick, this year's preseason pick, and Wright State, our nemesis, right? Uh, who's been, you know, the, the tournament champion last year. So four of the teams that, that think they should win the championship will have gotten out of the way on the road. Uh, it's important that we get at least one of those as a win. You know, we might have them out of the way, but if there's four losses, well, it, it, 
and they're really not out of the way. They're still in right now. Hey, Camp, I had a late addition to the uh, Ask Camp. I'm going to get to real quick with you. Uh, Giovanni Moshe says to us, uh, Ask Campy, I've been hearing some talk about Oakland's fight song. What are your thoughts on it? How does it hold up to other schools' fight song? I'm not the right guy to ask that because we fought so hard just to get one. You know, for many of the years that I was here, we didn't have a fight song. I wanted an alma mater and a fight song. And the alma mater part of it was if you go to many schools traditionally, when a game's over, they go to the middle of the football field, the players do with the band, they lock arms. In basketball, they do the same thing. Like you go to West Virginia, and uh, after the game's over, Huggins and the team and the cheerleader, they lock arms and, and they sing Country Roads, right? It's awesome. And it is awesome. And, and last time we played there, I think the officials went out and got in there and locked arms. Uh, the although we can't confirm that right. we suspect it. Right. Um, <laughs> I got but, you. I you know, right there. Texas, Texas, uh, you know, the eyes of Texas. Uh, Kansas does it. Right. You know, yeah, and it is, it's a tremendous tradition. And it's one I tried to get somebody to do that. And I even tried to write one, and everybody laughed at me when they were saw it. But um, I am thinking as my son gets older, and maybe I'll have him try and write one. Uh, you know, I don't think we want to rap to it, but... Um, <laughs> He's got very good musical skills, so maybe when he's got some time, he could do that. Because I think the tradition of that is so cool. But what happened was it fell on deaf ears, and then somebody, you know, Horizon League Matt might be able to really answer the question because he was a drummer in the band in the early 2000s. And that's when the fight song was finally somebody, I think, a, a, the, not the guy that ran the band, but somebody in the music department wrote it. And we adopted it. And I think when it first came out, everybody thought it was stupid. And, uh, you know, fight, fight, fight for all planet. And then, but I think over time, it's yeah. grown on people. And I, I like it a lot. I do too. You know, I'm glad we've got one because for 20 some years, we didn't have one. You know? So, what was the question again? Uh, how does it hold up to other schools' fight songs? Oh, well, well, I mean, it isn't the victors around Wisconsin, but I mean, it's. You know, I think it's the league. victors of the Horizon League. Yeah, I mean, in our, our league, in our league, you really don't. I couldn't tell you any place that we go that you really hear it. No. You know, and again, I think schools like ours aren't, aren't steep in tradition, and that's all I've ever wanted is to come up with things that are, can be traditional that we can latch on in 35 years from now when most of us in this room aren't here anymore. Uh, they're still, you know, they're going to the mid court after the game and they're locking arms and singing the, the alma mater is something that we would all be proud that we helped start, you know, and, and I, I'm really pushing for that. I haven't given up hope, but I'm getting close to. Yeah, no, I, I, I hear you camp uh, final minute and a half of the show. What's it, what's it, what's it going to take to come back with two wins? Well, <clears throat> well the first game is we got a guard Warwick and Vincent and uh, Falter. We've got to guard those three guys. If one of those three guys have, gets a, an unbelievable game, we're, we're in real trouble. And then it's going to come down to a possession. If we have a chance, if we win there, it's going to be a nose to nose game down the stretch. And we got to make somebody's got to step up and make plays. We can't let Brandon, Brandon get 10 offensive rebounds, you know. And then Wright State, you know. That, it's always about toughness with us, right and they've they've out toughed us for five years now. And at some point, we were going to have to have enough of it and just go in there and, and knock somebody on their butt. Uh, I, I saw I was getting the prep together. I saw that like Faulkner and and Warwick and all those guys are still there. They're going to get a pension from Northern Kentucky, and they've yeah. been there. They've been there forever. So that'll do it here for the Greg Campy Show live from RJ's Pub in Rochester Hills. Golden Grizzlies in action. We'll be back at it live next Monday, right here, from RJ's Pub in Rochester Hills. This has been. Greg Campy Show. Thank you for listening, everybody. Oh, see you later.